ID. I have to say, we've been doing this for four weeks, and it's been amazing, and there's never been a just box like that. I just said that to Ryan, and he said, it's because I went here. I said, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we got a lot of SG up here, like Mike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right on. Just, just Mike. <laughs> um, all right, so... Kevin, so you guys were developing Black Panther for a while, and you introduced him in Civil War. Why did you guys decide to introduce him in that film, and what was it about that character that made him right to sort of do at that time? Well, we, you know, I've always said that the goal of Marvel Studios was to bring as much of the comic universe to life on the big screen, and Panther and Wakanda is a gigantic part of that universe. So you go back to Easter eggs in Iron Man 2, and Wakanda is on a map in, in a background of a scene in Iron Man 2. So we've been planning for a long time. It all started to come together with uh, Civil War, we were developing that story, wanted a third party who wasn't, wouldn't naturally gravitate to Iron Man or, or uh, Captain America and kind of could give a shit about either one of them. <laughs> and Nate Moore, our executive producer, said, how about Panther? And within a matter of weeks, Chadwick was on board and we were, we were writing him into the movie, knowing that he was going to serve a great purpose in that movie, but that would be the launching pad to finally doing the movie. So, Ryan, you, you wrote Director Creed, which is one of my favorite movies, and I think... <laughs> almost, almost, almost everybody on stage. Um, so, coming out of that movie, uh, which was a critical and commercial success, I'm sure you got offered tons of stuff, and this is the movie you chose. Why Black Panther? Was this, was this a character that meant something to you when you were younger? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't like... Um, I actually started talking with with, uh, with 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 Nate Moore and Kevin before Creed came out, so it was never like a situation where I was like a bunch of offers in front of me, and it was like, you know, Black Panther's the one. If, if that was the case, Black Panther would have still been the one. But but I was actually talking to them, I think like while we were in, in post on, uh, on 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 Creed, and um, it was just like an amazing, you know, it was an amazing uh, opportunity, and, and you know, I, I loved, uh, I always loved comic books coming up. Um, you know, and and I, I, around that time, I was really kind of kind of dealing with my own identity issues, and, and you know, kind of kind of investigate um, this idea, being obsessed with this idea of like what it means to be, you know, what it means to be African American, what it means to be African, you know, um, and, and looking at issues of colonization and all these things. And you know, I was my mind was kind of in that in that place as I was wrapping up Creed, and that was when when Nate and, and Kevin reached out, and uh, and just kind of like knowing what what. You know, how, you know how, how much I love Marvel's movies. You know, and meeting those, meeting those folks there, it was it was absolutely a, a no-brainer. You know what I mean? It just became, it, you know, I knew it was a, the, the next thing I wanted to do. Well, cool. I, I would just in terms of the reaction tonight and the reaction to the movie, um, you know, we talk about I, part of the reason we do the series. I love movies. The movies are meant to be seen on the big screen and having that experience. And when I was in school here, we would take a yellow school bus to Westwood to go to the big movie houses to see films. And it was one of my favorite things, and I still go do that all the time. And it's not quite as crowded as it used to be. Like, you used to have to go up early and, like, wait in line for hours to, like, go see movies in order to get a good seat. And now you kind of can show up, like, 15 minutes before. And so we went to Black Panther opening night for that movie. And I think we figured it would be crowded, so we showed up, like, 45 minutes ahead of time. The place was packed. We got shitty seats. And there was just this, like, energy in the air. And there was, like, a table out front of people checking in for, like, school groups that they bought tickets for to, like, come see this movie. And people were, like, it was, like, the reaction you saw. were, like, standing and cheering. And it really, it, it felt like you could feel more than a movie that this movie just, like, meant something to people. And I was just curious for, for all of you guys, because there's a lot of you here tonight, 
what what did working on this movie mean for you? And like, and, and when did you get a sense that that this was more than just a film? <laughs> Like, yeah, Hannah. He's scooting back and I'm like, why are you scooting back? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was a, it's, it's, it's a life altering, you know. And yet you don't really think that way going in. And I'm, and I working with Ryan. I mean, that's for me a no brainer. And, and I knew when he brought it. I mean, what I read about it, and I was like, mm -hmm. I see that Ryan's doing Black Panther, and I, was like, I know he left camp comics and I talked about on Fruitvale Station. And, <laughs> Show me his artwork on cream and stuff, and uh, so I, you know, I was like, this makes sense. And you know, once I started getting into it, we started going through, and we took, we traveled to mm -hmm. South Africa and South Korea. I mean, it was just life changing. Everything, just meeting everybody. Kevin, the day I came in for the meeting, that I'll never, I'll never forget that. And it, it, the biggest part of it was, um, I'll have to say this. You know, Ryan hates when I talk about. But it's more to me. It was more working with Ryan because of the environment that he creates on set, in the office, just every single day. And part of that for me was this. You know, I was, I was, I've been a guarded person all my life, and meeting Ryan, it sort of opened up a, a new. You know, I let my guard down, and I became more a more creative person. I became a better person, a better at my, my job. So you know, on this journey of Panther, and sort of. You know, asking ourselves what it is to be African, that me, what time to figure out where I fit in, because I've always felt like I'm just fit, but working with Ryan, I've always felt like I fit in. So it was sort of a twofold, you know, working with the people, the best in the business, Kevin, just Victoria, she's not here, but, and. Um, she wanted to come, but decided she didn't like any of you, so yeah, she didn't. Really <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed and to be here, she had to work. And the way they embrace everything. You know, it was such an eye-opening experience that when you get to a certain level of, of you know, and then, the, of the, it, it, you know, it leaves me speechless a little bit, because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and around the world tell you that usually I'm not. And, <laughs> but, so it was all these things happening at once and it, figuring out the responsibility of it all, I guess, in my, my mind, because um, I knew that that was a big piece of it. And, I had such support and such guidance, and the whole team was was there. So it was a lot of learning about myself, and mostly just working with Ryan. I I just become a different person. I I, I can't I feel free to be myself, which you don't often often get. So he is an important voice, but he's also just an important. Voice. That's great. Um, <laughs> How about <laughs> the question? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. How about the rest of you guys? Uh, I'm actually from South Africa, and uh, for me, I mean, I grew up um, white people minority in South Africa. So the thought of my fellow South Africans seeing a film that represented them just gave me absolute chills. I was so excited about the film before it was even a part of my reality, and when it became a part of my actual reality, I it it was just incredible for me, an incredible blessing and honor, and. Uh, to see it so well received, and for people to feel that they could claim it and be proud of it, and South Africans especially because one of our languages is spoken in the film, just really felt like the movie was made for them. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful, incredible feeling to, to bring that to life. Um, I grew up as a huge comic book fan, um, and I've been a fan of the Marvel movies since they they started with uh, you know, Iron Man. And uh, you know, have, having the chance to work with Ryan from film school, um, I kind of want to echo what, what Hannah was saying. Every movie I do with Ryan, I, I, I start in a certain place in my life, and at the end of it, I become a better person. Um, and, and it is because he lifts everybody on, and he lets everybody. <laughs> no, I know, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but but it's, it, it's true because he, he wants everybody to have ownership over the movie. He believes everybody's story should be somehow told and filtered through him as, as a director. I mean, there were times during post-production where, where we would have a meeting with, with Kevin and Lou and Victoria, the, you know, the, the three-headed monster they have over there as the execs. Um, <laughs> in the best way, in the best way possible. Um, but, uh, and then we, we, would, we, would, we would, you know, show the scene to some, some production assistants you know, later that day and see what they thought because that's 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 what matters to Ryan. It's this movie is for people by people and, and, and that's what he that's what he cherishes. Um, but to be honest with you, every day I woke up like I better not screw this up. 
Um, that's that's really just how I felt, and I um, I'm kind of surprised I didn't. So <laughs> for me, uh, it was a total immersive experience. It uh, challenged me every day to think outside the box, to do more, to be more, to present this beautiful Wakanda, to to research and think about everything, every piece had to have meaning. I was definitely connected to everything that was worn by any character or background person in this film. I was involved with the principles and the background very, very personally. And I think it was because of Ryan and what he actually uh, could communicate uh, that this world was about. So um, it became a very personal challenge for me. I remember the first time we showed him the finished uh, Dora costume laid out on the table and I could hardly breathe. And uh, Ryan takes his time and he looks things over very carefully. And I could hardly breathe because I said, if there's anything wrong with this costume, I'm just going to faint. And uh, he looked up and he said, it's good. <laughs> oh, so, so um, you know, it was very personal, and I, and I wanted to honor African culture in the best way, in the highest way, like we've never seen before. Ryan kept saying, I, w I just want to do something different. I want to do something different. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I was there with him, wanting to do something better, something different. I'm also very nervous about public speaking, so bear with me. Um, Rachel told me not to ask her any questions. So we're outside. <laughs> um, we've already broken that rule. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm the opposite of Mike. I've never read a comic book in my life, and the only Marvel movie I'd seen was Iron Man because Maddie shot it, and I didn't see. Um, so it was not my wheelhouse at all. But I know Ryan, it's the same thing. And it's like I knew from the moment, you know, it's like Ryan's doing a superhero me movie, it's going to have a message. And this is a chance of what bigger platform to reach people than. than and I, I know the reach that Marvel had, even if I hadn't been the, the Marvel movie goer. Now I am, of course, it's even more. Um, but, you know, I, I think it was just it was a chance to, to, to have a message that could reach a larger platform. And, you know, and like both Anna and Mike and everyone who worked with Black Ryan before, it's a really special, unique experience. And for me, of course, the, you know, the opportunity to shoot a, a big movie, which, quite frankly, women haven't had that chance very often. And, you know, obviously the bar was set really high, and I also felt, you know, a huge amount of responsibility to make sure that that door stayed open. And thank you to, you know, Kevin and everybody who took a chance. Because, you know, for me, I, I didn't have, I, I, I was actually due in the middle of Creed, so I didn't get to shoot that film. So I was going from a very small movie to a huge movie with nothing in between. And that's really a testament to, you know, I still don't, I don't know if Ryan was like, this is a condition, or if it was Kevin and, and Marvel being like, why not? But it, it's amazing, I think, that I would give that opportunity. I had to come right to the end. Just the amount that Kevin and Victoria and Lou supported us to this was a new experience for working on something of this size and scope. And, you know, my first visit to Dev meeting, I just remember like shaking and ha like having to have 15 pre meetings and all kinds of stuff. I just needed to be right. And at the end of it, just the love that came, you know, everybody said what they had to say and we all collaborated. And it just, so it was, it was that also that experience. It's a film experience that is a once in a lifetime experience, I think, for me at this point in my life. I talked a couple times over the weeks about, about our visual development process, which is very different than, than other places, where we get together once a week with the entire team and see basically what was generated that week. Costumes, set designs, keyframes, previs. Um, and it's how we all collaborate, it's how we all um, know what's going on. And as I said a few weeks ago, it was only after a number of movies that I realized it was an unusual process. It was the only way we'd ever done it. Um, but the the other thing we've talked about over the I'm like the professor up here now because I've been here four <laughs> weeks in a row. But the uh, the uh, uh, hiring filmmakers who have not necessarily done giant uh, budget films before, but who have something to say and have a vision and 
and certainly um, Ryan fits that mold. Frankly, Ryan had, in, in a lot of ways, more accomplished than some of the filmmakers we work with coming off of Creed, which I think is the best movie of that of that year. But we always say, well, we can do that because we surround them with people who have who've done lots of big movies before. And it was Ryan who said, well, I, yeah, uh, he was open. He didn't have any conditions. He said, I'm open, I, I'm, I'm open. Um, but would you guys also be open? And, and I think there's some strong people that I'd like you to, to meet as well. And we said, sure, but thought, well, we'll have other, other people to, for Ryan to meet. And it, it, goes, it goes for almost everybody down the line here. Uh, and Hannah was the first that we met with. And she gave by far the greatest production designer presentation we'd ever seen on a movie that we really needed. <laughs> Well, I, I was going to say, when I, when I first saw this movie, one of the things that struck me the most watching the movie and watching the credits was um, how many amazing women were on both sides of the camera on this. And for big movies especially, you don't... Yeah, let's have a big one. Yeah, I think that's something you got to to, especially on, on bigger movies. Like, you get jobs because of the jobs you had before. And, and like, you don't often see that. And looking back, like, Ryan, you've worked with a lot of these, or almost everybody here before. Was that something conscious that you wanted to do to, to hire one of these posts? Or was it just one of those things that just kind of happened? I mean, honestly, honestly <clears throat> like, everybody, um, Everybody up here is like, you know, the best people I've met at what they at what they do. You know what I mean? Like, I met I met R Rachel and, and Hannah on my first movie, and I was trying to hire like the best cinematographer that we could, you know, that we that we that we could find. Like, I didn't know Rachel, and if Roger Deakins would have been like, sure, I'll shoot your movie, he'd have been hired. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like we, we were, you know, we were trying to. All I was trying to do was just find like the like I was trying to make the best movie possible. I had to stall in my head. This will probably be the last movie I ever, I ever make. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, we're making the best it could be. And you know, and I met you know, I met Rachel uh, over over Skype, and she was like, you know, she was amazing. You know what I mean? Like, so that, you know, and I, and I went to go see her movie that she had just shot, which was um, called The Sound of My Voice. And she shot that film on a DSLR, like before people were really doing that. You know, I went to go see it in the theater. I was like, I'm even the only person in there because at the end it was at the end of the run. You know what I mean? And I was sitting there like. Yo, if this person could do this with a, with a DSLR, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, we, we, we're good, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, said, like, I said, like, yeah, let, let's, let's, you know, she said, yeah, let's, let's go, I'll love, I'll love to do it. You know, I was, I was super happy with Hannah. Like, you know, I never, you know, you had, you had your moment with Hannah when she came in to pitch, but I, I had a moment with Hannah where, you know, we, we had actually found a production designer we thought we were gonna, we were gonna go with. It might have been right, she was an Asian who was like, was like, yo, I want you to, to meet with this, this this other production designer. So I was like, you know, sure. And I'm Skyping on her, you know, and she's like in New Orleans. And she's like, you know, talking to me about all this, you know, all this stuff. And she's like, well, I was thinking about, you know, I was thinking about uh, Oakland. I've never been there, but, you know, I've been looking at, looking at pictures of it on the, on the internet. And then I kind of broke it down into these colors, you know. So she walks over to her wall, she's painting, you know, colors on her wall. And I'm like, yo, nobody's ever broken down where I'm from in the colors before. <laughs> Oh, this is right. Yeah, no, this is for sure. Where, where, where it's like. And I'm like, yo, she could do that from like Google searching. And I said, hey, 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 she on her wall for a for a Skype interview. I should hire. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that was a, that was the hiring process, and then going through, you know, making a, making a film with them, which just blew me away. Like, you know, with, with Mike, you know, I know Mike's just always here, you know, here in school, and Mike is just, you know, incredibly smart. Incredibly, you know, incredibly hard working, you know what I mean? Incredibly collaborative, you know what I mean? So like, you know, I, I, it's really just like the the, the, the best people, in, in my case, you know, it was the best people for the job. And, and, you know, it starts from the top down, you know, like like Mike talked about the three-headed monster. It's kind of like having three, you know, really, really talented, gifted, you know, workaholic older, older siblings, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's Kevin Lou and Victoria, you know, and, and Victoria, you know, when it comes to like, when it comes to post production, really and truly, everything else, you know what I mean. She always, you know, she always has Kevin's ear. And she just, she's just incredible. You know, she's just incredible spirit. You know what I mean. And, and, and so it, it, it's there at Marvel. You know what I'm saying. It was there on the on the film. It was there in the script. But it was really like, you know, I don't know if you can find somebody who's better at, at their job than Victoria. You know what I'm saying. It's like she's the best person for the job. And, and um, it was just one of those things where I think we just. You know, we just really blessed to have these folks, man. And, and, and 
like Deb was the last the last one I wanted to join. You know what I'm saying? And Deb and just you know she was like fresh off cutting Spider Man Homecoming. She had like a week off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, like two weeks, like two, like, like two weeks off. You know what I'm saying? It was like you, know, you gotta get in here. You, know, you gotta get in here like 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 wow. You know, while this while this thing is while this thing is moving and, and, and and it was like a high high pressure situation, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and um, and she just was, you know, from the first meeting, like Mike and I sat down with her, she just, you know, she just blew us away. And she was incredibly sharp, incredibly talented, you know what I'm saying? And, and so we were just fortunate to have, you know, the, um, you know, specifically, you know, you know these, these, you know, these, this crew, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was whether it was male or female, you know, what I mean? we should like it's incredibly special people. That's awesome. Well. <laughs> Well, the other thing that, that I loved about the movie, and, and I think I think everyone else did, is that it's a big giant movie, but it also feels very personal. Um, obviously, and it's like, what what was so personal to you about about the stories that you wanted to tell in this? Because I, I think it's it's really apparent when you see the movies that, that it is. Yeah, I think um, you know, uh, a big testament, a big testament to Marvel. You know, when I first when I sat down with Kevin, you know, I was I was. You know, before I even raised it, he was like, "Look, man, people say we make, he said, people say he make big, you know, big studio comic book movies." But he kind of went through, you know, pretty much every film that they had done, and he kind of told me how that film was personal to that to that filmmaker. You know what I mean? And I, I had seen all the movies because I'm a comic book nut, and I love like movies. So I'm like, "Man, you're absolutely right. I never thought about, never thought about how specific these films are to the, you know, to the filmmakers." And then I was kind of like, "But I, you know, if I was to do this, this is what I would, you know, this is what I would, 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 would want to make it about." Um, specifically, you know, what it means to be African, like, you know, African American identity versus, you know, people who were who were born and raised on the continent, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and eventually it became more things that we would that we would talk about. And um, you know, he was incredibly open to them. I mean, I mean I feel personally connected to all of those things. I think the biggest one is, is like the fact that, that T'Challa was, was was um taking on a job that he felt was was too much for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for me, that was what this movie was. You know, I mean, every, every day it felt like, you know, it felt like it was too much. And then I remember, um, you know, one of my fondest memories, my fondest conversations I, I had with Kevin was like, I never believe this man works like every day. You know what I'm saying? But it was like the day before Christmas Eve. You know, I, like I told him, you know, I told him I wanted to, to, to talk with him. He was like, man, come to the office. I'll be there. I think you were with me with Peyton on like some anime and stuff. And it was just me and him in the war room talking, and he was like, he was like, man, what you worried about? Like, you know, like, like really, like, what's the worry? We had to start shooting like in a month. And he was like, what's on your mind? You know, <laughs> so I was like, don't worry about this, but I work yourself off. I'm worried about that? And that's what Jimmy, you know, what I'm saying, let's go. <laughs> 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 it, was, it, was, it was literally, and it was, and he was literally like, man, we're gonna be fine, man. He was like, we're gonna be, we're gonna be good, man. This will work yourself off. I made a bunch of these, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was kind of, I was kind of, that was kind of. Attitude, but it was. But I mean, but I mean, it was every day. I, I, I was like, man, maybe y'all should check and make sure y'all still the same. To let me do this, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and but it was that kind of, it was that kind of feeling. So that's probably what, I, what I'm the most personally connected to it in, 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 in retrospect. Because I felt like, you know, I felt like it was, it was, it was more than I was ready for at the time. You know, pretty much every day, and I was thankful that I had all these people who. I tell y'all straight up, are all smarter than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on my, on my, on my team to help me, you know, to help me along. Cool. Um, we're Rachel, and I'm gonna keep breaking my promise. Uh, so you, you were, you were the first uh, uh, female cinematographer ever to be nominated for an Oscar. This year. <laughs> Love movies and, and growing up watching Oscars every year. What was that experience like for you? And also, what what led you to want to become a cinematographer? I think everything that led me to want to become a cinematographer was everything that made the Oscar experience dramatic. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never wanted to be in the spotlight. I've always kind of been very content behind the camera. Um, I'll answer that part first. I think just visual storytelling. I mean, I started with photography. Um, and you know, was fascinated from a very young age. Like you know, it's all I've ever wanted to do. And then at some point, I, you know, I saw a film. I think in junior high or freshman year of high school, where I was just like, you know, completely blown away and, and moved and you know, bawling. And realized that I never had that experience with still as much as I, you know, as much as I love still photography. Um, and that was sort of you know, at that point, I probably still didn't notice whatever it was, but it was like 
that was my sort of foray into filmmaking and wanting to tell stories that I felt like could have, you know, that kind of an impact. Um, the Oscar experience was, it was between, I mean, the, just the timing of getting on the Oscar in conjunction with Black Panther releasing, I think within two weeks of each other, was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like deathly ill the entire time. I, think <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got the sort of flu bug that everybody got and couldn't shake it for two months. Were you, I don't know the math right, were you pregnant then? I was pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't like them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, here, let's talk about the look of the film, because I think one of, the, one of the really cool things about this movie, as opposed to some of the other Marvel movies, which, which are very sort of earthbound, um, is that you got to create this whole new world that was a really cool sort of combination where it was African, but it was also like a uh, culture that we've never seen before. Um, and I just, I, like every time you're sitting behind me, like every time there's like a shot of another set, I'm like, oh, so cool. <laughs> it's like, I decided to talk to you about it. Um, what, was, what, what, was your, what was your process and sort of the design and sort of like, you know, basically world building, like creating this, this world that we've never seen before? I mean, honestly, the first, you know, when I first started getting into it was when I was working on this presentation and really understanding, like I started just diving into, because I was like halfway in the comic world. You know, I love Marvel movies, but my son and I have seen every single Marvel movie. So I was really very aware of what all of that was. But the books themselves, I had never been a comic book person. My son is, so he kind of schooled me a little bit. But then I just started researching like everything. I want to know everything about Black Panther and going and then starting to understand like what, well, you know, without really knowing anything about what it would be, what, what would I want it to be? You know, and allowing myself to be free in that way. Once we started going, and Ryan was in um, Africa and he was sending me pictures, uh, like, this is cool, and, you know, Ted talks about tech and pictures that he was taking on the streets of South Africa, and, you know, as he was traveling around in Lesotho, and he's like, I love the blanket, I love this, and I love the surroundings, and, and, um, and we were just really, and we would sit down and talk about it. And I knew we wanted to be there. We wanted it to sort of represent, because there were the, the different tribes, you know, and it's a, also a representation of the diaspora, the Pan-Africa, you know, and, um, and and also you want it to be really cool. So it's, I mean, it was, I mean, I was scared to death. So, and one day I went into Ryan's office and we were talking about it and I didn't really know where to sort of put my feet, like where am I starting with this? And he said to me, and, and I know this, this is, you know, working with an editor, this is, you know, I know this. And he says to me in the office, he's like, you know, well, what are all, what's going on in all the buildings? And what street is this? And what kind of, like, you know, what happens over here? And what are the stories behind some of these things? And I'm like, yeah, right, because every, you know, film we've done for the Vale Station in Oakland, that's his hometown, and, and then doing Creed and all the kind of, you know, research we did into just film making Philadelphia, you know, and, but then I real and I, that was the moment I realized, so this whole place needs <laughs> history. <laughs> it became real big at that moment because I realized, like, oh, I need to understand all the parts of the town, and, and so I just dove in, you know, and I guess I'm a little uh, um, eccentric and neurotic when it comes to that because I can go over the top a little bit and you know I just kept going and deeper and deeper and, and the whole prep time I just kept adding to it and working with Ryan about you know at how we wanted everything to look. We wanted to be high tech but we really wanted to pay reference to um, all the different cultures and all the tribes that we were referencing and that all the things that I was looking at. I was looking at evolution. I wasn't looking at like oh let me just take this thing because it's really cool and make it that thing. Um, I was looking at like sort of Dogon tribe. How would this have evolved over time? Like, it, and trying to find references in pre-colonialization um, era of, of different countries in Africa. So, I mean, it was the process was just one day at a time, one chunk at a time, one nervous breakdown at a time. Just like, um, <laughs> one, one, like you know. But the, the, the biggest part about it was that you had so many people around me to help me with the process. As I kind of got into it, it really was like, there was a certain freedom that I don't, I've never had. And, you, and, and I always thought in my mind like that would be less with like a company like Marvel, it's so big and like, you know. But I had more. I mean, we would go into meetings and I'd be like, oh, here's this thing. And <laughs> here's this. And, you know, Kevin and Victoria would be like, that's really cool. And then pivot what, you know, the, the talent, for instance, that was first about 
being the old spaceship. I would like, never, or, you know, the old aircraft's not a spaceship. I never even thought about, like, that's what he's actually flying. And when Kevin and Ryan and Victoria, like, were like, why, why couldn't he be flying this? It just needs to be look a little more aggressive and we need to be a little, little more modern if we made it. And it was things like that. That's how the world talent came. I was looking at it for something completely different, but without everyone else. So that was a lot of, that was a big part of the process. Um, and there was a lot of trial and error and, and iterations of things and just going to Ryan and, and you know, he'd have a sign on his office that says, do not disturb writing. And I would just, <laughs> I'd show up in his door and be like, hey, every morning, you know, I'm nuts. So, and I would, Nate would be like, he can't be disturbed. Like, yes, he can. <laughs> I'd be laying on his couch, like, you know, having some other problem that had nothing to do with it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, he was like, don't go in there. Um, let, let's talk about the other <laughs> design elements. Uh, Ruth, let's talk about the amazing costumes. Cause Times that struck me against tonight because I knew you were coming and really looking at it was just like how many different styles and different cool sort of costumes you got to design. And there's that that shot where um, you know T'Challa's coming coming back for the first time. His mom's there and his sister and I think Lupita next to her, and they're all wearing such different costumes and just the, the ability to create so many, such a wide spectrum of different things for this movie. Do you want to do you want to talk about that? And, how fun that was. Um, this is okay. my first uh, time working with Marvel, and it's an incredibly collaborative experience. Um, there's so many elements of Wakanda and of Black Panther film that were uh, part of the design. There's a visual development department run by Ryan Myerding, who designs the Panther suit and the Dora. Uh, there, it was that wonderful 500-page uh, manual, Hannah, that you did about Wakanda that I tried to read. From start to finish, but uh, I did, I did, and tried to learn all of the languages in it as well. But, uh, it's an incredibly collaborative experience, and I think it's uh, unparalleled to any other experience I've had in my entire career. Um, Ryan knew color palettes that he wanted, and it was just a lot of sharing um, in this experience, and then it kind of like plopped in your lap. You know, and it was uh, go make this, make this happen. And so you work around the clock. I feel like Brian asked me all the time, "Hey, uh, did I wake you up?" And I was like, "No, no." <laughs> but um, did, did, did he wake you up? He'd always say that. He'd always say that. But um, you know, as far as the design elements and and getting into the tribes and looking at the beauty of all the different tribes around Africa, that was like paramount to how we infuse the culture into the costumes and it was really a wonderful experience to take you know the himba drapes and add that to the door and stretch stretch the skin on the drapes and de decorate them with trinkets and do uh, some mass eye beading and all of those uh, elements from africa that we hadn't seen before we hadn't done before it was an incredibly exciting experience and there was so you know Africa is such a vast continent with so many resources and and, and inspiration to, to draw from it just became non-stop and uh, you know I challenge myself every day to you know infuse beauty and, and pride um, to do something royal to do something really special and uh, I'd get a text from Ryan uh, in the middle of the night or early in the morning, and he'd say, you know, I need to see, you know, X, Y, and Z, and we'd share those those photographs. He's always on on par and on time with, you know, what we were all creating. So um, it was an incredible experience. My workroom was like a trip through Africa. We had Dogon masks on the walls. We had the blankets draped all over the place, and we were constantly reminded of what we were doing. So, um, Mike and Debbie, this is the first time you guys have worked together. What was that collaboration like, and how did how did you guys divvy up scenes, or what was that what was that process like? Um, <clears throat> so, for the for um, most of production, actually all of production, we went to some of the director's cut. Um, I had another co-editor named Claudia Castello, who was a USC student, really unbelievably talented editor, brought so much amazing stuff to the table. But for, unfortunately, she had to leave. 
uh, the project, and um, so we kind of had this, this void that needed to be filled. And um, you know, we, we were working away, and, and um, you know, we we were looking for, to, to bring people in and follow and recommended Debbie would just uh, come up with Spider Man, and, and we didn't even meet with anybody else. I don't think we uh, we, we sat down and had lunch with Debbie, and, and she just. Um, she just seemed like she was going to bring so much to the table and, and, and a lot of hunger, a lot of passion. She really cared, you know, about, about this, about, about, you know, th these characters. And um, so, you know, every editor has, has different sensibilities, sort of different workflow. Um, and, and, you know, we, we had to find a, a, you know, sort of a working relationship. But, but I think, you know, um, we, we all left our egos outside. You know, I think, um, and, and, and I could... I could see the younger version of myself or other editors, if another editor comes in and wants to change stuff that I really like, I could take offense to it, you know, and I, I could be really defensive, but, but that's not what's best for the movie. And, and I think that, you know, Debbie and myself always <coughs> know what's, what's the best for the movie, what's, what's the best idea, and, you know, if she had to know there's something I loved and, and, and it was a better idea, you know, I would be dumb not to, not to take it, the movie, the movie would suffer for it. Um, and, and Debbie having, um, you know, we had to lean on her a lot because, um, you know, we had run and I had never done one of these, these big budget movies before with, with, this, with this many special effects and, and this big a team and, and when Debbie came in she, she just she, she just kind of led us and guided us along the way and, and um, it was it turned out to be an amazing collaboration. Yeah, I was already a fan of Mike and Ryan's work. Um, I, I had actually been at Sundance and I would watched um, Ryan win the award for a you want fuels that night, but uh, I, I watched basically all the the night of the careers race again, and I absolutely loved Creed. And yeah, what well, like you're saying, I think we were both passionate about everything, but precious about nothing. And everything, as long as the film got better, it didn't matter where the note or where the idea came from. Um, but uh, I think it, it was kind of sort of an instant kinship, and uh, it, it was a, a really fantastic collaboration, and uh, it worked out. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk about some of the cast. Um, the, another thing that surprised me when I first saw it is the movie's called Black Panther. But for a big chunk of the movie, Black Panther is dead. And it, the void is filled by these like amazing actresses and these amazing female characters that were such a part of the film. Do you, do you want to talk about a little bit the creation of those characters and, and why that was important to sort of have them there? I mean, all those actresses were amazing. The, the, the women in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, uh, the facet and denying. And yeah, 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 like, it, it started from the comic books. Um, if you read the, the run of, 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 uh, of, of like, the comic books, um, you know, it's, it's some amazing uh, uh, ideas, you know, and, and some amazing female characters in the, in the books. Um, so I was kind of apparent to it, like, when we were going, you know, we were going through it. But um, I think that it was also, uh, um, Something that we knew was an opportunity to make the, the film different, you know, like like in the comics you have the Dora Milaje, who was just you know this all female guard, who kind of you know they they evolved over different runs. If you read the you know if you read the books, um, and for us it was it was a, it was like an amazing opportunity. It was like wow, we can have this this element, which is something that we, we've never seen before. You know, this African you know this African country already within this this, this military division that's all you know, that's all female. Um, that I consider to be the best fighting force, you know, in this country and possibly on the planet. You know, that was something that we were you know, really excited about. And, and you know, as we got to the script writing phase, you know, working with my co-writer Joe Robert Cole, you know, we wanted characters to represent, you know, different elements of the, you know, of the country. Um, and that was kind of how, you know, we, we, we honed in on Koya, honed in on the kid, you know, honed in, honed in on Shuri, and then honed in on Ramonda. And, and it was like. You know, when we got into the casting process, it was later on we realized it was like, whoa, like this, this might be, um, you know, this is a unique, a unique thing to have, you know, this many, you know, this many characters, you know, this many women characters who, who are, who are this, you know, got this variety of age, you know what I'm saying, and they, and none of them are in competition with each other per se, you know, um, and that was something that the, the actors just kind of made appearance of, was like while we were shooting, they were like, oh, this is cool, you know, and it was like, oh, that's something we'd ever, we'd ever thought about. You know, we tried to try to find a way to lean into it. You know, but it starts with the, you know, it starts with the books. You know, and and and, and Marvel is really, you know, it's really, it's really supportive of us and hard on us in that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, in making that the, the, the best it could be, we knew we had something that would potentially be special. Um, so one one thing that I love Bond movies, 
and uh, and watching the movie like like this movie kind of feels like a Bond movie to a certain extent to me, and especially the casino scene and, and like you know the scene with his sister the, in Q's lab, which was awesome. Were, were, did you grow up loving Bond films as well, or were, were you thinking about that at all, or is that just? No, I was, that was totally like like totally intentional. Like like the, the first thing, <clears throat> no, the first thing that that that, uh, that Kevin and Knight said was like, you know, you know looking. We look at all of our films and, and look at how they fit into different different genres and give us different elements, you know, for our universe. And they were saying we figured that, that Black Panther could be, you know, our, our James Bond. And as soon as they said that, they, they kind of had, you know, like um, uh, I, I grew up uh, at a weird time with Bond. It was like uh, the, the Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> 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 and I thought it was like, you know, it was it was cool. You know, it was like Golden Eye. We played a video game where we watched the watch best video game. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no, no, but, but you know, they, you had, you had, uh, you had those films, I never die, and those, those films. Um, but then it was, the, you know, then it was Casino Royale, when it was like the, the, you know, the reboot, Daniel Craig reboot. And I remember that was just, I remember loving that movie. And um, and I was, I was, I was finishing over at uh, a film over at MGM, you know, and they had those, they had those movies. So you would go into the office and you'll see like. You know, Sean Connery linked up against the Ashton Martin, big black and white. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it was around. So when they said that, it, it, and it was also something that I hadn't thought of. You know what I mean? Like that's always a sign of a good, you know, of a good being when you go in there and smite, you know, like throw some across the table. It's just something that you never thought of, and you instantly love it. You know what I mean? And that was kind of how that was. So you know, um, when we got into writing the script with James Bond, you know, element was, was always something that we were, we were aiming for. Cool. Well, in, in terms of that, like I, I love the action in the film, um, especially the casino scene, which did feel super Bond and the, and the car chase coming out of it. Um, you had, I mean, you've obviously done fight scenes in Creed and stuff, but you've never done anything at this level. What was your What was your approach to shooting action? And in terms of Mike and Debbie, you guys, in terms of cutting action, like, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I think that the the, the approach up the front. Was um was trying to find a way to make it feel make it feel unique, you know. Um, uh, but at the same time, give give it give it scope, you know. Um, and that was something that 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 we that we talked about, you know, early on. Like how can we make have this body style different? You know, how can we make um, you know, the, the weaponry of what kind of different? You know what I mean? And, and, and then at the end of the day, you realize it's really just about it's really just about storytelling. You know what I'm saying? It's, and I think Mike and Betty can come. Kind of speak to that because you get lost in all the all the bells and whistles, and you know you use the pre and you use the you know fight choreography, and sometimes it involves the second unit. You know what I mean? And so most things were new to me, you know. Um, and and, and Mark was real great about helping helping guys through that process. You know what I mean? Um, but but we, we often find ourselves in a you know in an editing room, and, and it, it gets right back to ground zero. You know what I'm saying? It's like oh, it's the story here. You know what I'm saying? You know we punching and kicking everybody. You know what's this what's this scene about? It's still a scene. I don't know if Mike and Debbie want to speak to that. And, and Kevin's kind of a whiz in the, in the editing room, too. Yeah, it's interesting because I think sometimes people assume that uh, cutting an action scene isn't an intellectual endeavor, but it's actually very complex because you're trying to tell a story, you're trying to you know, tell an emotional story and a narrative story and make things look really cool at the same time. So it's really challenging to interweave all of those things simultaneously, but also a lot of fun, and you can really go in quite a few directions and feel emotional, but then think something is really cool. And uh, for us, I think it was important to understand what was going on and not just have sort of fast cuts and get lost in it, but to actually understand like who did what and how do I feel about that. Great. Um, you know, I think uh, with a lot of these fights and action scenes. It's, when I go through the footage, I don't just look at the, at the punches, I look at the land, or the cool flips or kicks. I look at the expressions on people's faces. I look at reactions. Um, one great thing we, we actually learned on Creed, when, when we first cut uh, together the final fight, um, you know, it was cool. It was some punching and, and, and more punching and whatever. <laughs> and, but it wasn't until we put the reactions of the people who loved the people that were fighting that it really came alive and really made you feel like you were, you were taking the punches with them and going through that experience with them. So we, we kind of took that um, in, in the first Warrior Falls fight, um, where, you know, it's it's one-on-one. It's -on -one. Um, you know, you get the drop-off, you get the door and everything, but 
but, but really finding a place where we're going to show his, his sister, who was just giving him a hard time up until that point, he was really worried, because seeing that, that change in her is going to make you even more worried for, for the child. Um, same thing with, with the crowd, same thing with you know, his mom, his friends, everybody. Um, so again, it's really, it's, it, and I think, I think Ryan does this really well, and I think he with, with all, all the departments from what I can tell, is that he, he, he tries to find the truth in every single moment, in every single thing that costume set every shot every cut there's there's truth to it and and if it isn't it, it doesn't it doesn't belong in the movie and we, we push and push and fight to find that truth and, and i think that's why it can whether it's a it's an intimate scene with, with with two people who just lost a friend to uh, a big fight with, with a bunch of people i think that's why it all it all can resonate with the people everywhere i, I, I think you mentioned here from kevin too like we'll make some great action scene in the yard because you know, like you work on so, you know, so many and so many different ones. It's, it's, it's everything you've, you've all already said. It's the the bells and whistles are fun, and you you want to have a level of spectacle, but it's the it's the characters and it's the moments and it's the gags within within that. I think one of the things we talked about in our Christmas Eve Eve meeting was the way in which Panther ended up on the roof of the car. Uh, yeah, uh, just in terms of the, you know getting into the nitty gritty of the detail on Christmas Eve. Eve. Yeah, yeah, so, so when that was, was at first, you know, I was thinking like James Bond, cool, you know, like, like he, he, would, he would, you know, he has his new suit where, you know, uh, it's in his necklace. So we first, we first pre-visit when he's like just kind of walking out slow, you know, um, and, it, and everything comes off, you know, you see it all in slow motion, cool. And then Kevin was like, nah, man, you should throw it. Like land on the car, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, so for me, I was like, he, he walked out cool, the suit came on. Yeah. And then he like climbed up yeah. to the top of the car <laughs> and started going. <laughs> that was the part that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't cool. <laughs> like, 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 Kevin got like good, got like good instincts, but like, hey, that looks cheesy. Like, like, like <laughs> so far, we climbed up the car. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it would, it would be like saying, well, with cops over too, it would be like, that little thing, that's, I don't know. We doing that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, then, and then it would be, you know, so, so, so for me, it was like, wait. Okay, so if he does, you know, so if he does this, and then what I realized in watching it later on, it was like, yo, he's in a hurry. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's in a hurry, man. Like, he got to do it. He's got to do it fast. He got to get where he's got to go. Like, the audience will respect him more for that. You know, and it's, and it's cool as hell. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so he flipped that, you know what I'm saying? that high. Um, and, I, and I think, it was, you know, there was moments like those where, where, um, you know, where you, you know, where you, where you learn and, and, and push and come out with something real, real dope. So let's talk about the music of the movie. Um, I love the soundtrack. I love the Kendrick Lamar soundtrack. And you saw me out there walking out to the party and talking to you, and I thought, oh, um, it's cool. Um, how did how did he get involved, and how did you get him to write an entire album of original songs for this movie? <laughs> Oh, oh, we got to watch something else, man. We, we. <laughs> so, so, quick, quick, quick story is like, <laughs> quick story is is um, is, is I, I I met Kendrick and Top, uh, and and a guy named Dave Free who, who works as um, the president of TTE. Um, I met all those guys um, shortly after finishing up Creed. Um, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, let's stay in touch, you know what I'm saying, if you're working on anything. And I think I might have mentioned to them about this. And then um, and then later on they came, you know, they came in, you know, to, 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 to the studio and they sat down and we talked and he watched, you know, he watched the footage. I think he came, I think Kendrick and Dave like came by the editing lab, they, they were like taking snacks and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like grabbing like, grabbing bananas and, and like, like I didn't need my editing for seven months, yeah. but those five minutes I was out. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I was like taking everybody's room to meet everybody. Yeah, they were coming, coming in. Yeah, yeah, I went, they went to meet everybody and stuff, and, and they just kind of came and hang, hung and, and, and ate, you know, ate, ate snacks and watched, you know, watched, watched, watched footage, you know, um, and then, you know, and, and then booked the studio and then made a bunch of, you know, made a bunch of music. They collaborated with Ludwig Gorenson, who's our composer, um, who went, went here as well, went to the composer school. Um, but like a funnier s story is like what we went through, like once once the music came in, when it's like, you like, <laughs> yeah, he'd gone and listened to nobody knew this album existed. This was pretty late in the game, right? <laughs> yeah, relatively. I mean, we were we were we were deep into post, and he went to go. Did you go to the studio? 
He went to the Kendrick Studio <laughs> and listened to, I don't know, five songs, six, seven, eight songs. Every time he went there, there were more and more. And he came back and he was sort of depressed. And tell them why you look like that. I, I was, <laughs> so, so like how it, was, how it was happening was like they were working and we had everything. And then like, we, and then we, you know, I'm, in, I'm, in the, I'm literally you know, in the suite with, with Mike and Debbie. And then I get a text from Dave, like, hey, yo, come to the studio and listen to the music, like right now. So, I, so I'm, I'm with Nate, and I'm like, Nate, we got a deadline. He's like, no, go. He's like, go, go, go listen to the music. So me and my brother hop in the car, and then we drive, you know, it's like, we drove like to the other side of LA, it took like an hour and a half. And um, and I get in there, and then, and then they, they play it for me. And like, and like, you know, it's like Kendrick, it's like Kendrick with Warren sitting right there in a tiny studio, and he's like watching me while I'm listening to his music. <laughs> And my brother's like right there, and then me and my brother is looking at each other like they going song after song, and it's like, and I'm like, yo, this is like this. I'm like, yo, this music is better than the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, if somebody came in and said, y'all gotta stop it with the movie right now, put the movie out, put the soundtrack out, I'm like, yeah, they gonna say y'all like the movie, uh, the soundtrack though, though. <laughs> so I go, so I go back, and then like they like Kevin and they like, yo, how's the music? And I'm like, I'm like, guys, you got a problem. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think it's better than our, our movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing like about, about. Fortunately, we had like some more time. You know what I'm saying? Called <laughs> <laughs> so, like Mike and Kenny. I'm like y'all got. Oh, imagine how much money would have been made if the movie had been even better. <laughs> it's good to sound better. Um, well, you know, I want to ask you about the composer because I, I noticed that watching it tonight, again, that's one thing I always love in Bond movies, where they took a little bit of the theme song and they incorporated it into the score, and you guys did that on this. What, how did the composer deal with that? Did, he, did Kendrick take some of the stuff from the score and put it in, or was it vice versa? Yeah, they got a producer called Names. Okay. Sean Wayne, who, um, who, 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 who worked with, uh, you know, who, who worked with, with Lil Big. Like, they would, they would have materials back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Like, like um... So he has some of the elements from the, you know, from the, from the score uh, in the film, and they, they collaborated on on, on on one or two songs too. Cool. Um, Rachel, another question because I know you enjoy them. Uh, you guys have talked a lot about um, about colors of the film, and and like it's the, the movie's beautiful. And I, I think from everything from from the, the costumes to the look and, and to the you know to the design. What, what's your process, and how did you and Ryan collaborate on on coming up with sort of the look of the film and the color scheme of the movie? You don't want Ryan answer that? No, you both answer it. I just, I mean, it's, it's such a beautiful film. I'd love to hear you guys talk about it. I mean, Ryan had a ton of references, and, and one of the things that I think is always amazing is they're not, you know, it's not a bunch of other Marvel movies. It's, we looked at an episode of uh, Chef's Table. You know, we looked at, um, we looked at Samsara, which is, you know, the, the bomb trick, sort of 35 millimeter, sort of, I think, 65 millimeter, like, tribute to the world. Um, we looked at, you know, photography and all these other things. Um, and then when we started to break it down, you know, I think we obviously wanted Wakanda to have a very different look than the Americas and the UK and kind of, and the light in Wakanda to feel very different from the light anywhere else. Um, you know, and then working with Hannah, working with Ruth, and kind of, you know, figuring out what the palette was for each of, each of the main characters and then how we wanted the cinematography to reflect that. Um, you know, and, and VFX is a big part of these movies, so it's such, it's, you know, much more deeply than, than movies which are totally in camera. It's really like, you have to kind of figure out beforehand, and then, you know, it's really going off of Hannah's drawings, you know, you're lighting at times to things that don't exist, so it's kind of like making the light make sense based on references that, you know, we've all come up with together, or that Hannah's come up with, you know, making the cinematography work with the, with the clothing design, and one of the things I knew my very limited VFX experience was that I really wanted to shoot blue screen, not green screen. So that meant going to Ruth and saying, hey, you know, can you make this work so that we can shoot blue? Because I didn't want the green spill everywhere. And so that was, I mean, the collaboration just becomes very kind of intimate all the way down the line. Cool. Um, well, I could talk to you guys all night, but I know we have a bunch of people who want to ask some questions. Uh, so why don't we open it up? Um, yeah, right here. Yeah, um, thank you guys so much for coming here. This was a, an amazing experience. My question is for Ms. Morrison, if you don't mind. Um, Mr. Kugler touched on the fact that the big action spectacles are all about drawing out scope, and what I've noticed both in this movie and in Creed is that that means drawing out the duration of the takes. How do you manage that both in pre-production and on set? Um, so, you know, the wonder which, like, which 
I think started even as early as Fruitvale, but really, you know, Creed was the, the big one, and then we did several of them here. It was, it was all about experiential cinematography, you know, and it really comes from, I think, the thing that both Ryan and I have always appreciated is really subjective perspective, where you feel like you're with the person that you're, you know, if it's, if it's a tall scene, you're with the tall, if it's a koi scene, you're with a koi, and you're really sort of, you know, inhabiting their shoes, their eyes, everything else. You know, in the case of Marvel, the blessing is that you can actually build the sets around the water, and that's not a very common thing. And so, like for instance, in the casino, you know, that was again working with Hannah, working with our stunt team, figuring out what you know we sort of figured out what the stunt, what the camera movie was going to do, and then we actually had to sort of construct a set that would that would uh, allow for us to do those moves. Um, you know, in another film, it would be much more just sort of lighting the space and then you know. And moving, moving away through it. I mean, I guess it's, it's the same philosophy, um, but here it was just actually physically constructing a set that could kind of keep up with us, you know. And, and in this case, it was obviously some cable cam and some, some bigger, kind of more complicated scenarios. Um, yeah, right there. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming, uh, all of you, especially Ruth. Congratulations on your Icon Award. Like, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my question is for you, Ryan. There's a lot of USC film school students in the audience, and I think this screening is very special because you went here. Could you talk about your experience in the program and how you feel like going to the program has prepared you for your future projects and this amazing film that we just saw? Yeah, I, I um, <coughs> talked talk about it uh, briefly. Uh, you know, I love, I love going to school here. Um, and, like, the biggest thing that I found that, that, that it helped Help me with was um was, was just meeting collaborators you know what I mean meeting people who I you know who I, who I still you know who I still work with um to this day you know I met met Mike here uh, met met Claudia here who we, we used to we used to work with um, met uh, Ludwig Gorenson here uh, who, who's done the music for for, for everything that I that I've uh, worked on also does all the childish Gambino's stuff um. But but and, and I think that, that that was really the biggest that was really the biggest you know the biggest thing that I took away was was, was uh, um, you know just meeting meet my classmates. Um, I would say the second biggest thing uh, was you know just just learning how to how to um, how to collaborate. You know what I mean? And, and learning how to how to um, collaborate based around some you know you know solutions. You know and um and. and, and you know, respecting other, respecting other people's, you know, you, you know, opinions and positions, and, and, and um, figuring out how how, how how to work in any type of situation. You know, what I mean, I felt like the, the school did a good job of putting you in that boot camp. You know, um, in different, you know, in different circumstances, in situations you feel like the sky is falling. You know, what I'm saying you, you still got to get your shot. You know what I mean? Or <laughs> situations you, you know, where you really got to fight for an idea that you believe in. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, all of those, all of those things, I'm very, you know, very thankful for. Um, you know, and I, I think it's like it's not a coincidence when you, you know, when you, you know, when you meet other people that went through the same, the, you know, similar process. You know, um, you know, I feel like Kevin and I get along, you know, you know, real, real well. When it's time to, you know, when it's time to go, um, and we'll oftentimes reflect on our experiences at school. Like, oh, when I took that class, was it like that? Oh, yeah, you know. And I think that that um, there were 20 years separating. <laughs> 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 but I think that it, it, you know, I think it's always with the, the things that I, that I t took, a, took away, you know, um, I was, I was said the most. What would you say with there are specific courses or anything like that? Or just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I'm an old man now. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like Mike and I, the first one we worked together was 546. Uh, that production design something for you and your director. That's like 532. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, 
for, for, for me, those those things are are are, are like well, oftentimes when it's the most exciting. You know what I'm saying? Like when you, when you're working with people who who um who aren't necessarily from your exact background. You know what I'm saying? But y'all come y'all come to find a common ground. You know what I'm saying? Like like the, the, you know the, the the audience is key. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, the audience is 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 it is it in result without the audience there's no there's no reason for making a movie and and I don't want to like make films for segregated audiences you know what I'm saying like I want the audience to look like to look like y'all it's got to work for you know it's got to work for everybody you know what I mean so so if, if if I can't have a conversation with a collaborator who's from a different from a different background you know what I'm saying like like then I'm, I'm not a good filmmaker you know what I mean like like um uh, and, and that's really how I, you know how I came how I came up. You know, what I mean, that's not even something that really. Um, I think that's something that makes the makes the makes the process stronger. You know, when you, when you work with people that come from you know, that come from different backgrounds and that, and that, and that see see things from through, through, through a different uh, perspective. You know what I mean? Like like so so. You know, um, I think that that's that's a. Uh, that's actually like one of my favorite things about the, you know, about the job. Like, at the, you know, I, I've never, I've, I've never physically been to New Orleans. That's where Anna lives. We talk about it all the time. I kind of travel through that, you know, kind of travel through that with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, talking with Debbie about what it's like to come up. You know what I'm saying? As, as a South, as a South African. You know what I'm saying? Like in a, in a Jewish community. You know what I mean? Like what that's, you know, what that's like. We would vibe over that. Like she'll spin around from the avenue and we'll just talk about, <laughs> you know, we'll talk about that. And that'll, and that'll work its way into the, you know, that'll work its way into the, into the film. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, you know, me and Mike come from like, it's, it's like literally the polar opposite side of the, of, the, of the country. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I remember it was a conversation like when we were, when we were working on Fruitville. And Mike was like, yo, like when you, he asked me, he asked me, he was like, yo, when you see the police, like, do, do you get worried? Like, you know, because we were kind of, we were, all of you want to talk about that, Mike? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, uh, Fruitville. Kind of what I was saying before, it, it changed my life a little bit. Um, you know, in, in one way, there was, a, there was a scene that was actually cut from that movie. It was uh, uh, Oscar was 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 talking about how he didn't believe teachers uh, who told him he could be anything he wanted, including the president of the United States, because he would look up at the poster and see that nobody looked like him. And I asked Ryan, like, is that is that really how how people feel? And and he told me, yeah, I was. It, it changed my life. It, I mean, I was absolutely floored. And I think I think you know um, I think it is those discussions. It is it is you know um, learning that that we have way more in common uh, in a lot of ways being human beings with the relationships with our families, friends, you know experiences. But but we're also separated. I think bridging that gap you know through this art and and what Ryan said about the audience. You know it's about the audience at the end. The audience is is diverse. You know so so to have different diverse voices telling the story. Um, and it's all filtered through Ryan. You know, if, if, if Debbie Wright pitched an idea to Ryan, and it's not right. It's what he what he wants to do. You know, it'll, we'll, we'll discuss it, but ultimately, it's his it's it's it's, it's his decision. Um, but yeah, I think I think you know, every everybody has has a story to tell, and that's something that brings to the table. And I think again, if, if you search for the truth and in, in, in the moments and the story, I think it can become something special. I think just a chime in that a friend of mine who went to school here um, said to me recently, we were talking about something. He grew up in Mexico, and, and he said one day, he's like, he's like, you know, he's you and I could not come from more different sort of backgrounds, but what we have in common is the movies. Like we both love the same movies, and we grew up having the same sort of like cultural experiences. And I do think you guys, these guys, touch on them, right? I always say that's the best thing you come out of this school. It's like the people you went to school with, and you're like, you know, your friends and colleagues, and you hopefully come up together. Anyway, it's not a trend. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're just standing up over there. Like with, with each, you know, with each project, with each class, the, the crews would get bigger and bigger. Um, 
to really just like learning what the departments are. The departments kind of grow a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But like they don't really change. Like if you if you you know you on a on a on a short film, you know you got your production designer, you got your you know you got your AD, you know what I mean? You got your you got your editors that you that you work with, that your costume, you know what I'm saying? Like like you know um and, and the bigger your sets get, the more people are there. But but those 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 key crew positions don't change. I think like the bigger you get, you might you know you might get you might inherit a second unit, you know what I'm saying? Or you might. Uh, inherit a VFX supervisor who has to play a, 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 a more, you know, key role than they might have played before in a smaller film, you know. Um, but but I think that that you know it, it grows exponentially. Um, that the pressure grows for sure, you know what I'm saying. But but at the same time, you you grow as you grow as well to, to be able to to be able to handle it and, and, and deal with it. And um and the, and the folks who you're working with studio wise makes a big you know makes a makes a big difference, you know. Say something real quick about that because when I first worked with Ryan on Pink Mail, I had done at by that point maybe three or four fe small features as a <coughs> production designer, and so I had you know had been on crew. He shows with me you know, size crews, and when I worked with Ryan, it was his first feature, but I'd seen all his shorts. And what was really what really took me, I think that what, what really drew me in was that when he was working with, when we brought the props people in, when we brought, um, <clears throat> when the costume designer came in, when I came in, you know, for Vail was small, but he sat down with everyone, and I remember him distinctly saying to the prop people, and I was in the room, and now he was there, costume designer, and he said, you know, they started breaking things down to him, and he said, you know, he's like, wow, I didn't really think about all of that coming along with the props, like reading props is a story. It's not just like he holds this and then the next scene is he does this, but the prop people brought all of this story to how, you know, Oscar collected the bag. Like what, what, they were asking him all these questions. And the thing that I think really separates Ryan in, in, in a certain way from some of the, you know, first time, in, you know, indie directors that I've worked with is that he took the time to sit down and listen to them and then make whatever decision he needed to make about it, right? Like, I, and he did the same with me and the same with everybody. And he was very humble in that fact that he was still learning, you know? And we were all still learning, really, but we were like working with some veterans, like Abby Rogers and the prop people at that time were veterans. So I think that, and then he's carried that on from from Veil vale to Creed to Black Panther is that he listens to all of us and we all have some type of ownership, like Michael had said before, but I think it's really important to understand to, to hear them make a decision and that's part of collaborating but letting people bring something to the table and then making a decision really quickly <laughs> yeah, I, would, I would even say ryan insists on honesty because i think you get into the habit of the film industry instead of stating your opinion you state it like a question so if you're like perhaps maybe this and he's like are you saying you want that? Like, and, and, and by insisting on honesty, it just allowed you to not worry about treading on a delicate ego. You could just say how you felt without worry, you know, being concerned that the way you phrased it might step on someone's toes. And it just it made the movie better, being so open to collaboration and embracing sort of everyone. I mean, our, our PAs had some like, great, you know, uh, things to offer that helped make the film better. and. Uh, that's one of the incredible things about working with Ryan. Well, um, I know we have a lot of questions, but it's getting late for these guys. Who has one great question? Oh, that person feels very confident about their question. Back to that. <laughs>
that, that as far as that question, you got to talk to the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think that um, not not like to to to, an, to answer to answer your first question, like do we do we know? Like nah, man, we have no we have no idea what the film was, what the film you know would would do. Like the thing is, like you never know. Like I was talking, I was talking, Kevin, you had made like eighteen of these movies like before we. Had, before we made this, he was like, he was a shell of time, man, you never know, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, like, when, it, you know, he was talking about when they were making Iron Man, you know what I'm saying, they didn't know what, what it was, what it was, what it was going to be in that launch, you know what I mean, like, this whole, this whole, you know, 20 film and counting journey, you know what I mean, like, like, but, um, I think that for us, f for a long time, and, and it takes a long time to make these movies, you know, all you have is yourselves, you know, especially to you, before you start sharing with, with, with audiences and stuff, and it's like, yo, is it working for you? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and I the first time that I saw the door, you know, in co in costume, you know what I mean? And and, and uh, walk walking through Hannah's set, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember the first time seeing him getting, you know, getting extremely emotional. And I and I knew those, you know, I knew those women. We had to search the whole world for him, you know what I'm saying? To find him and, and and get him fitted. But seeing him for the first time, it was it was, you know, it took it took your breath away in person, you know. Um, and, and you know you never know if the audience is gonna have that same you know that same reaction, but um but but you know it, it's we knew that we did we would talk about it and then like and then like um you know like like Hannah and Rachel and we had a, we had a uh, in Ruth and we had an AD who was terrific man Lisa Satriano um you know they would say hey we're your door you know what I mean and they would run up and they would run up the hill when we were scouting or something you know what I'm saying and, like take it like like uh, take a picture together. So I was like, okay, they like it, you know what I'm saying? Like they got they got pretty good taste. So so you know you just kind of go kind of go with that. And Kevin would say, oh man, that's cool, you know. And Victoria would love them, you know. Like like uh, but, but, you know, as, as as far as did we predict that that people would take to take to that part of the film like like they did? I mean, I, you know, it's no way it's no no way that you could, you know. Um, it's also no way I could predict when movies get made in the future. Very important but but you know we can hope, you know. Well, as, as they sort of mentioned it, I know nothing's been announced, but have, have you guys started talking about another Black Panther? Active negotiations with Mr. Kugler <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> well, on that note, um, well, 